G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Now by the end of this video, the goal is for you to have a fundamental knowledge of metadata in SharePoint and how to use it effectively and what the benefits are. So let's just get stuck into it. And you can see on the screen here, we're gonna start in whiteboard because we're gonna go through a few little concepts first, then we are going to jump into and actually uh, implement some metadata. So first of all, what is SharePoint metadata? Well, it's really data about data. So it helps you organize and find and manage documents and list items a lot more easy, easier, should I say. Using metadata instead or alongside folders, yes, folders still have a role to play, does enable for smarter searching and filtering and also automation as well. All right, so let's move across. Now the different types of metadata in SharePoint. We've got our default metadata that comes with SharePoint uh, and a SharePoint document library. So when you create a new document library or you have a brand new site that gets provisioned, we've got some default metadata that is there out of the box, right? So with things like created date, uh, created by, modified by, and modified are all kind of what we call default metadata. Then we move into custom metadata. So these are user defined, so the ones that you create. So things like project name or a document type or the department or a status or a document owner. So they're custom metadata. And then we move down into uh, more of what we call managed metadata. Now this is a centralized repository or a centralized location of reusable terms or a taxonomy as we like to call it as well. And these are stored in the term store and it's centrally managed, which does allow and enable consistency across different sites. We can create a metadata column and point to a term store and we've got that consistent list of terms that we can utilize. Now, what are the benefits? Well, there are many, but I've pulled out four. So we've got improved search. We can find documents using filters and search queries um, and different views that are based on these metadata fields. We've got better organization. So we can group, we can sort without relying on complex folder structures. So double clicking inside folders, inside folders, inside folders. A big one here is around consistency. So using managed metadata, as I just mentioned, ensures that we do have this standardized tagging across the organization so that it is nice and consistent. Automation, all right, so this really does enhance the triggering of workflows based on metadata and values. So think about approval workflows or reminder workflows, review dates, all of those sort of things that we can add as metadata to our documents. Uh, we can then automate different types of business processes based off the back of that metadata. Now, a few little best practices first. Then we'll jump into a site and we'll actually build a few of these out. So obviously we wanna keep things simple. We wanna limit the number of required fields to encourage the biggest part of this is around user adoption, right? So let's not make it too onerous on people to add and fill out our metadata. We do wanna review it regularly. We wanna update the fields, update the terms if we're using the term store. So as the business needs evolve, we need to evolve with the business as well using choice and metadata columns for consistency, choice columns as well, all right? We spoke about metadata, but we've got uh, different types and data types, uh, like a choice column that we can use for consistency as well. And a big thing here is about training users, and hopefully what we're gonna do here is the first step for us, uh, so that you have that knowledge, so that you can then take that back to the business as well. All right, so let's jump out of the classroom now and jump into SharePoint. We've got a document library here, all right? The default document library, I've just created it, it's brand new. Now, we said we had system or default metadata, and you can see two of these here. We've got modified and modified by. Now, if I wanted to have a look at a, a few more, I'll go show or hide columns. So to do that, I just hit add a column, show or hide columns, and you can see I've got all of my default metadata here. Created by and created are two other ones as well. So there they are there, all right? So that comes with 
all document libraries that get created. Now we can add columns. Now columns equals metadata. So I can say add a column and let's say I want to say a date and time column and I will click next. I might say due date is the name of this column. All right, so we've got some things that we can set here. Each type of column has different properties and different settings that we can do in here. But you can see I hit save and I've now got a piece of metadata that is called due date. All right, now what I just did there was create what I call, what we call a, li a list column or a library column and it's only available on that library. So I could also create a choice column and I could say uh, document, let's say document status. Now I could say new, I could say um, approved and I might say in review. So again, I'm just adding a column or metadata to this library, which allows me to then add, if I go and I drag and drop some documents or add some documents into here, allows me to set that metadata, all right? So if I drag and drop a document library across here, you'll notice that modified, modified by, created and created by automatically get filled out with that data. But these custom columns don't. All right, so I can then go to the properties or the details of the document and I could then say document status, this is new and I could say a due date and I could pick a date. And you can see that that data and that metadata then gets set, all right, because I've set that metadata. Now, those columns that I've just added are only available on that library. What if we wanted to reuse and have a document status uh, that we can use across other libraries in this site. Well, we would need to create, instead of a list or library column, we would need to create what we call a site column. Now, a site column is available across that entire site. Now, if you are a site owner or a, um, an admin, then we can go into view all site settings and under web designer galleries, we can go into site columns and we can actually create a site column. So I can say create, and then that is going to allow me to say, uh, let's say project um, document status in this case, all right? So if I go into project document status, then I'm going to say this is a choice column and it's going to allow me to create some choices. So let's say, um, we'll just use the same values here. So we'll go new, we'll go uh, approved, and we will go in review. Or let's say draft, all right? We'll say draft, um, we'll, we'll put draft first. So let's go draft, approved, in review. And we can set a default value if we wanted to. I will keep that as draft and I'll click OK. Now, what I've just done there is I've created the column, but we need to actually add that column now to our library. So we've got document status. So I'm going to go into my library settings this time and I'm just going to remove document status. All right, so we'll remove this one and I will hit delete. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that site column that I just created. So you can see here, add from existing site columns under columns. So I'm going to go to custom columns. There's my project document status and I'm gonna click okay. Now, because of the site column, I can add that column over and over and over again to other libraries that I might have in this site or even a list if I've got list that needs a project document status. So same as before, I can go to details and then I can set the project document status to draft and we are good to go. Now you notice it's not, a, not as visual as the other one. So what I can do also is format this column. So let's have a look and see what we can do with formatting this column. So I'm just gonna hit refresh here so that it loads and we'll go to format this column. And you can see, I'm gonna say, let's go for a choice pill. All right, so I'm gonna edit my styles. You can see I've got draft in blue, approved green and in review yellow. And now we've got our pills. Now, 
if we have a look at the different types of columns, so you can see we've got different types. We've got text, we've got choice, we've got multi lines of text, person, number, yes, no, lots of different data types that we can use. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but the last one that I'm gonna go through is the manage metadata. So if I jump across and I'm going to go into my site settings. So if I go to site information, I go view all site settings, and I, we can see that if I go to term store management here, I've got a term store management. Now, I've got that open up in this tab, okay? So if we go and open up the term store, you can see that we've got global term groups and we've got site level term groups. Let's now, what we'll do is I am going to jump in and let's use let's use the site level term group so i'm going to add a term group here so let's call this uh project files and i am going to create a term set called project or let's call it these document types all right so i'll say document types and then in our term group i'm going to say uh minutes i'm going to say uh, proposal, I will say also let's go for risk assessment and we'll just leave it at that. All right, so I've got three there. So if I go back into my site settings here and I'm just going to create a list column or a library column here. So I can say add column, I can scroll down to manage metadata and I can click next. Now this is where I can say, here's the type, right? But I can select a term set or group, all right? Now you can see that I've got project files. Now I'm going to select document types and I'm gonna hit save. And then give this project document type as the name and I'll hit save. So now I can say select, edit the details, and now I've got a project document type, you'll notice that I've got a an option here. I can actually select multiple, all right? Now, I can say, let's say this is a proposal and I'll hit apply, okay? So now that's saving and it's set to proposal. Now, if I wanted to add values, all I need to do now is go back to my site information, go back to my term store, view all site settings, I'll go to term store management. And then what I can do is I can just add columns to, or sorry, add values to that term group, or that term set, sorry. So let's, you can see I've got a minutes proposal and a risk, in, risk assessment. Let's go SOW as my new label. And if I then, go back to the site, I'll go to project files, and I'll go to my files, I'll go to details, and then I can see here that what I will have is this new value called SOW, okay? So just by having by having that central place, those that term set, I can then have a managed set of, of labels that I can just centrally manage there. And again, I can create columns uh, anywhere in this site, because I've done it at the site level, a, any column of manage, of the manage metadata type and point to those values in that term set. So there we go. Managed, uh, sorry, metadata in SharePoint. Hopefully that brings you some value. Fundamentally um, really important to the way in which you can structure your library. Okay, means we can create some views, we can create um, uh, custom uh, filters and dashboards and lots of different things in that respect. So in the next video, following on from this, I'll show you how to create these views and uh, also create uh, different filters that we can then use accordingly. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.